So we continue to serial jobs, which is basically making a file that defines what to run and then submitting it and you can leave and come back and watch it. Then we talk about monitoring the job processes, progress, and so on. And this answers a lot of questions which people had yesterday, like how do I tell how much memory and time my job needs? What do I request? And so on. Um, then array jobs, which is serial jobs multiplied by many things happening at once. Um, then this is sort of a intermission. We talk about the module command. This used to be on day one, but we wanted to spread out the non-example based stuff even more. And then we talk about GPU computing and parallel computing. So we're not talking here about how to write your own programs that do these, but if you have a program that uses GPU or parallel stuff, how to run it on the cluster. And I think we probably will not get to this last part here, so we'll skip it. And then that. And well, we'll talk about this at the end, but you can read these follow-up suggestions for where to um, yeah, where to go next. So with that being said, any other introductory comments? Yeah, I'll quickly mention that basically today's work is like like yesterday we we got some interactive users of the cluster. We connected there, we we put some files there, we ran some jobs interactively and we got some interactive users done. So today we are basically like trying to tell the machine to do our work for us. And that is like we, we just try to tell the cluster or the machine and the queue system and so forth and that okay we want something to be done and and then we let let it do it and then we like reap, a, reap the benefits so everything is like built around that principle so you should think about it like a bit of like a like a programming your workflow this is kind of the thing that we are going to be doing uh, and this is done through these non-interactive tools and all of this is like related that we are going to be having. It's like everything is extended by, from the non-interactive jobs forward. So should we yeah. go to the, to the first topic? Yeah. So let's see. Serial jobs. Mm, I can close some extra things. OK. So uh, how do you want to arrange this? Should, Simo, do you want to talk in L-type? Sure, yeah. We have plenty of like uh, small examples littered around this, uh, this full page. So we can, we can then like go through the, uh, the examples together. So what are serial jobs? So serial jobs, like we previously run interactive jobs. So basically just commands that were executed on the compute nodes. So basically we had, we had, we told uh, the queue system, that, okay, here's a command, run it on the, uh, on the node. Uh, in some cases, we just wanted to have an interactive uh, like command line in, in a compute node. But okay, this, this works up to a point. But this all, everything here relies on uh, human interaction with the system. So basically, you need to like be there and write the commands that you want to be executed, and that scales only to the point of how many like command lines do you want to keep open. And like like we yesterday mentioned that like yeah, if you had thousand laptops, could you like run thousand times your code on the thousand laptops? Like most likely not. Like you you would spend your whole day writing commands on different laptops and it would be like really an inefficient way of working. I have but a good past, analogy about this, yeah. which I'll tell in the array job section. Yeah, but but, but the, in, in the cluster system, what you want to do is basically you want to codify your, your like what you want the program to do or what you want to do. You want to codify into these scripts and the scripts are basically like collection of commands that that you want to be executed and then you tell the queue to execute them and and you tell them give them to the queue uh, and then the queue uh, once once the resources have been uh, like you tell it tell it to get some resources once the resources are the resources are available the queue executes the commands for you and well stuff happens uh, so that is how it basically basically works. So you want to like create like this kind of a file that 
contains all the information of what you like basically instructions so basically the uh the queue system is a really good like cook that can do whatever you want uh for for do, do whatever you want as long as you give it a good recipe and this is the kind of the idea like you would need to specify that okay put the water make it boil like put the pasta into the water and this uh, this way like you need to give give it the instructions that it uh, requires and then it will produce you the the meal that you wanted but if you leave out some of the instructions it doesn't like try to fill out the blanks it doesn't understand what you're trying to do uh, unless you tell it like what what you're supposed to do and how this works is that uh, like we write these scripts so if you Richard wants to scroll to the to the yeah. first uh, mm -hmm. script example that okay. we have so so here's a like a simple uh, first job script that you could write so what do we have here so basically the first line is usually the same like uh, usually people run their scripts with the bash interpreter so bash basically means the shell like the command line basically uh, that means the first line is is uh, like always in place and with that you tell tell the system that okay run these commands uh, like in a command line so that that usually never changes the next few lines are if you remember remember from the interactive tutorial interactive session that we had yesterday we gave these resource parameters to the queue system like we gave in the command line with the s run we gave like give me some memory give me some time and uh, uh, we we specified these in in the command line but uh, well uh, if you run uh, want to submit the script instead you want to usually write the uh, requirements into the file itself so basically these you write these comments like this this is like static form of these comments so basically this hashtag and uh, capital s batch and after that you can have uh, some comments uh, or some some parameters for the queue system and the queue system parses basically through this file it goes through the file and then it uh, like looks for these comments and when it sees these comments it's like okay i will add these requirements to the job requirements and when when it encounters first line that is not a comment it will like stop looking and, and then it like assumes that okay all of the requirements are have been specified so the example here uh we ask for five minutes of time mm -hmm. should we start for, doing this yeah you should uh, probably write this. Yeah. So okay. to organize, I'll make a directory called Kickstart. By the way, did you get my screen share? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Great. Yes. Uh, so, so this will be my working space for now. Or should I put this in work directory? Uh, work directory would probably okay. be better, but it doesn't really matter for yeah. these small cases. As a good uh, rule of thumb, it's uh, yeah. better to go to the work directory and w work from yeah. there. Okay. Okay, so okay. Richard creates a new directory. So now here I am. Yeah. Um, and so should I make the use, script? Yes, if you use this, uh, like there's this uh, easy uh, editor called Nano that you can use from the command line. There are other more powerful editors as well, but they are more complicated to use, and Nano gives yeah. you lots of feedback so it's easy to use so uh, you can uh, type this nano and let's say this hello sh okay and then so... basically copy paste the contents or write yeah. the contents there yeah. so the first line uh, like i mentioned is the like uh, interpreter like who who executes mm -hmm. this stuff uh, the second line we ask for time resources. So let we say that this job uh, uh, should take five minutes to run. On the third line we ask for 100 uh, megabytes per CPU. In this case, it's a bit of a like uh, we'll talk about this memory memory per CPU. You can use mem, just mem or mem per CPU. We'll talk about the difference later on. But basically, 100 megabytes of uh, memory. And then we set up an output file for the for the mm -hmm. script. So in this case, um, yeah. uh, hello out. So this is where the output will 
uh, turn out to be. So the output, in this case, we'll talk about a bit more in the monitoring, but the output means like what the co what it produces into the command uh, command output, basically. Yeah. So so what you would see if you would run this command yourself, what kind of print statements it would produce? Those will be redirected into the output file. So in this case, we just run this one s run command of echo. So basically, just print. Uh, print hello username mm -hmm. you are on host node name and uh, can co save yeah. and run yes control x to exit and uh, say modified yes can and I enter. push yes and then hello.sh now if i list what's here there's this yeah okay so if we look a bit bit below to the documentation we can see there that that you then, if you want to run this command, uh, you in the queue, you, you need you need to use this sbatch command. So this sbatch command is is uh, is it basically means that run this as a batch job, and batch job means that well do it non-interactively in the queue. So basically, when you run this with the sbatch, the queue will take over and it will run it for you. So you reach that. So should we go? Press, yeah. Enter. Yes. And now we can uh, use, for example, slurm q, which will uh, work at some other places. But let's use it anyway. Uh, it, it it should work. We ah, we had now discussed it works. about yeah. Okay. It should be in other places as well. Yeah. So so it already run. <laughs> so it it doesn't show anything because it already run, and it produces the hello out. So if we should look at I... the so I'll yes, use a program you... called cat, which basically takes the concept, the contents of a file and prints it, which in this case is nicer than starting an editor, which I'll have to go and close. So here we go. It shows yes. I ran something. Yes. So the print statement uh, in the code uh, was like printed out. Uh, or in the in the script, it was printed out and it was uh, redirected to the output file, and then we we got what mm -hmm. we wanted. Of course, in this case, like this is like a really simple example. We didn't do anything really, but uh, we basically uh, uh, case we we could have had done anything we wanted in the code, like in the in the middle part. Like uh, if you show the uh, Slurm script again, Richard. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can, we could have instead of like the S run echo here, we could have uh, uh, done whatever we wanted here. We could have uh, loaded some modules uh, to load some software. We could have run some software commands, uh, and then they would be executed in the node that we we ended up on. Uh, and we could have specified some other parameters for the job. So basically, the whole workflow of or of our analysis, like these commands that you would normally write as this kind of like a series. Okay, I'll first run this command, I'll, then I'll run this, and then I'll run this group. We all could have put them into this, uh, well, uh, after we have specified the resource parameters. Mm -hmm. And and this is the idea of the serial job. So basically, you write this one script that you submit and then you put it there. And of course, like I say one script, it doesn't mean that you need to have one script for all of your jobs. It means for the specific uh, task that you're trying to accomplish. Uh, so you can have multiple of these. And the good thing also about these is that they document what you're trying to do. So, mm -hmm. so you can, like when you're running some analysis or something and you like, if you ever use, let's say, a Jupyter for coding, you end up into this, or, or MATLAB, uh, you, you end up, well, any any ID really, <laughs> like you end up into this uh, situation where often you you start different, uh, you run different like uh, commands, and then you run them in uh, different orders, and you no longer know like how did you end up into the endpoint where you got like like um, and and these like when you have this Slurm script, it, you basically have a set order of. Uh, executions a set order of commands that the program runs and and then you know that okay this is what, uh, what should well what the program should do uh, yeah. should we let people try this out on, sure like uh, so think... in the if we put into the chat a quick poll 
Yeah. Are you doing it? Uh, uh, yeah, I can write me. it. Um. Yeah, try running that uh, example that Richard just did. Certain about the formatting. Uh, maybe maybe somebody in the HackMD can help we go. set the formatting so that it's uh, it doesn't become so capitalized. But yeah. yeah, we needed more blank lines there. Oh yeah, yeah. By the way, I really like whoever adds other characters to the bar graphs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, like, it it wasn't that hard, right? Like this is, uh, it's very easy to create this uh, cigarette jobs. So basically, the only idea that you need to have in your mind is that, okay, what steps I need to do when I run the run the, run the program that I uh, uh, need to be done. And of course, this can be complicated. Like if you need to, if you have a very complicated program, you might have lots of complicated steps. Uh, but but usually, it's very easy to like codify what you're trying to do. Uh, okay, let's let's look at. The, Quickly, like most of the people have managed to, um, yeah, do it. Uh, yeah, I will quickly, uh, Richard, if you want to point the page again. Uh, so, so mm -hmm. quick uh, note about the warning that we have on the page there: run is bash, not bash. That is very yeah. common. So bash, even though the, the file is named as .sh, that doesn't mean that it's a bash. Like it's it's. It's well, going to be executed by bash, but the idea is not to run it immediately. The idea, the, yeah. the idea is to let the queue run it uh, on the background on the compute node. So you need to use s batch to submit to the queue. So that is very common that people uh, like because they sound the same. Yeah. <laughs> s batch and bash like. Sh should I really try it and let's see what happens? So yeah. this is what you should not do unless you're locally testing. So let's see, it says it's queued, but notice here, now it puts the output to the screen. So what actually happened is on the login node, it went and ran each line in the file. And the first, well, if we look at the file, we see this is s run hello. So it did request an allocation on another node, and then it Ran this. Yeah, before it, so it's like it basically like uh, like when you done. run bash, it those user and host name uh, with the currently mm. existing user and host name. So login tree is the current like place where you're running it. Mm. So it filled those and then it just ran it on a compute node right. where it printed like the already filled like uh, yeah uh, string. <laughs> so so it's a bit of a like a mess. So but usually usually it's a good idea mm. into your script. Add something like let's say host name at the start, so you know where it's mm -hmm. run, and you know that everything is running on the compute node and everything yeah. works great. But basically, so okay. if our pronunciation of s batch and bash uh, <laughs> mix, just remember that if you're trying to run it through yeah. the queue, you need to use the s batch. Yeah. Okay. So what's next? Is there really much more for? Yeah, this? we could we could talk about like quickly about the. Uh, the resource parameters. So yesterday we already have uh, had had a discussion about when we, we did the interactive jobs, like what happens to jobs if they are uh, they run out of memory or if they run out of time. So they are killed. So there's a bit of a leeway uh, to the to the job. Uh, so so usually there's like an hour worth of leeway in the time department, so or something like that. So. Mm. Uh, if the job runs a bit over time, it's not immediately killed when the time is hit. And uh, same with the memory, like if, if it goes a bit 
above the memory limit, it's not automatically killed. It's only killed if some other job needs that memory, or uh, it, it stays, like, it goes way above the memory limit. And, but, uh, so, there was lots of yeah. questions, uh, like, how do you speci how do you figure out these limits? In the monitoring section, <laughs> we'll talk about a bit more how, how you can figure this out, but, like, like said yesterday, it's a good idea to, like, compare them to your local computer. Mm -hmm. So if, if at your computer it takes like hour to run a simulation and it use like you have 16 gigabytes of memory, you might put like, I don't know, two hours and 16 gigabytes of memory as the yeah. limit. And then you can, after the fact, you can look what the actual usage was. So usually you, you run these like pilot jobs or these kinds of like test jobs. Uh, when you start a new, new thing, new analysis or something, you usually run one or two of these test jobs and see how it mm -hmm. behaves and then you adapt uh, your parameters afterward. afterwards. Yeah. If it gets killed then just like increase the limits and put another one into the queue. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, so, so so one thing uh, yeah, so, so if you submit jobs you might sometimes need to also cancel the jobs. Uh, so we will talk about the monitoring probably in the in the next chapter uh, in much more detail but but the canceling job is is something that's also in, um, important so each of the jobs gets like this job id uh, you can figure out the job id with let's say uh richard could you submit some like sleep job or something yeah okay in mm. like a create like a yeah like a like here, Richard will create like this kind of a mm, sleep job. Say five minutes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah. it yeah, that's prints great. the name so of basically, the computer, the time, mm. sleeps for five minutes, and then prints yeah. the date. You can see here that Richard is not putting any SPAS parameters, so it will use the defaults here. Yeah. Uh, when when you submit this kind of a script, so the defaults are like uh, hour of runtime, five hundred megabytes of memory. Yeah. So the job is now uh, there. Can you see if it produces any output? Okay. Um, like uh, with ls. Ls. So I do see yeah. a file so, here. Yeah, and you can see that the file name is a bit strange. So the file name, if you haven't specified an output file name, it's this slurm dash and the job ID of the job. Uh, if you run Slurm Q now, uh, what does it? What does the Slurm Q show? And for people in other universities, what you said this does exist. Yeah, so, this, yeah. this is uh, FCCI now supported. Yeah, That's great. It should, should be uh, in Helsinki University because they have multiple clusters. You need to talk to the Helsinki University people. Uh, they okay. they have a bit of a different situation, but. What we see here in the output is that we have this job running. You can see the starting time, how long it has run, uh, that it's running, uh, where is it running. And and on the left side, you can see the job ID. Whenever you submit a job to you, there's like a huge database on the background that keeps track of all of the jobs of different users. And and, and there's the queue system, that queue system that basically allocates uh, different resources for the jobs based on uh, like this kind of a resource prioritization algorithm that it runs on the background. So basically, uh, your job is given a priority based on your past usage and uh, and your re like re like the resources requested by the job. Hmm. And uh, and well, these kind of small jobs are immediately basically in the queue, like that they usually run very quickly in the queue. And it's yeah. currently running on the background. So if we want to cancel this, uh, Richard, what would you do? So we first would find the job ID, which I can find from the Slurm queue or also when I submitted it. And then as cancel. Yeah. And now if we look at the Slurm queue. Yeah, either, there. It's not it's there. Gone. If, if we're going to Slurm history now. So the Slurm history, you can give it also like this kind of a time uh, time format, like let's say one hour, so that you don't get all of the previous jobs that Richard has run. There's probably quite a bit of them. But you can see the last uh, few lines there. 
Okay. Uh, this is really yeah, pretty wide. wide. Yeah. But uh, the last few lines you can see at the bottom, there's like this uh, job ID, and you can see maybe on the right, not not really, but on the right, there's this. Uh, it says that it's cancelled. Well, oh. Where's the status? Yeah. So Stay. you can see some of the jobs completed and some of them cancelled. So basically, you're like, uh, when you're usually using this queue system and these inter non interactive jobs, you're firing away jobs that you have pro like pre programmed like tasks. You fire firing them away in into the queue, and if some of them like fail for, let's say, they have insu insufficient time or memory limits, you then add up those and put them back into the queue again. And, and you basically like manage like these uh, scripts usually uh, this way. Yeah. And uh, some, sometimes, let's say you you submit a job that you know won't finish in time, it's usually better to just cancel the job and uh, put another one with the correct time uh, time requirements um, into the queue. Yeah, that that's pretty much um, it for, for the um, serial yeah. jobs. Uh, one thing uh, that is uh, like uh, uh, under the hood, there are these partitions. So basically, all of there's lots of different compute nodes usually in a cluster. Like we mentioned uh, on the first day, the uh, cluster comp is compromised of multiple nodes and, and multiple different kinds of uh, computers. And usually, like for example, here in Alta, we have uh, many many different uh, generations of computers that have been purchased uh, like in different times. And then we have uh, also uh, different, like we have specified some compute nodes to be in some partitions and some in the others. In some side, like in Alto, you usually don't need to specify this partition. Like yeah, there, there's this, uh, like the script uh, slurm should automatically like put you into the correct partitions. Mm -hmm. But just in case, like in many other sites, uh, for example, in CSC or um, uh, well, some of the FCCI sites most likely, uh, you need to specify these partitions. So, so you can find the information either with the uh, either with the uh, Slurm command or with the sinfo command, which is like this bit more like the Slurm command mm -hmm. is wrapper for all of these different commands. But but if you need to specify this partition when you submit the job. You can do it by specifying either like dash dash partition equals partition name, or like simply uh, dash dash p and then the partition name. So, yeah, Richard, do you want to submit the uh, the, for example, the sleep job into the uh, debug partition or something like yeah. that? So, so. Like this. For example, in Alta, we have this debug partition for like really fast jobs that is meant meant for like debugging for really small jobs. But usually, you don't need to specify. But it depends on the site. Yeah, and this is really something that we worked on a little well a few years ago, trying to make the defaults as useful as possible. The best way to teach something is to make it where you don't have to teach it. Okay. Yeah, if you want to submit, if you look at the queue now. Mm, does it say what partition it's in? It. Mm, yeah, it oh. ends up there probably. Uh, yeah, Why is it? It, it? Because it's in multiple partitions, most likely the node. So, mm. uh, oh, yeah, it, I think. It, yeah, yeah, that's probably the reason. So but, I guess uh, for us, it expands debug to include all possible partitions, because why not? Yeah, but but yeah, so so hmm. uh, in other sites, you might get like the mileage may vary, but, but just in case, you will know that there's this partition thing. So basically, all of the nodes can be, uh, uh, there can be various of these partitions. Yeah. Uh, OK, mm, so we have a full reference here of many useful commands. Yes, there are very various of these uh, commands and various of the features in this uh, S patch and also in the, um, yeah. uh, well, in, in the 
slurm commands themselves a uh, few of the interesting features like we'll be talking about how to like get uh, multiple cpus and uh, these big mpi mm -hmm. tasks later on but there's also like uh, ease of life or like uh, usability features such as like you can uh, you can specify the the slurm to send you a let's say email once the job is finished mm -hmm. or something like that uh, there's features such as that uh, but uh, like if you want help like you should probably discuss with us before you s like you can test them out but at least like once uh, I think we got banned from the Alto ideas when somebody made like a <laughs> array job that made these uh, <laughs> mails uh, pop up quite a bit yeah. so, so uh, <laughs> you should be careful not to spam uh, too much oh. uh, with these commands but there's lots of like interesting features here that you can use in this um, so but but without further ado uh, we probably should go with the exercises so you can test out this um, test out these and we'll check the HackMD for any interesting questions but, but basically here are a few uh, things you could try out so in the first exercise just create like an batch job that runs hostname it's a good idea to write yourself so you really get like a grip of how do you write this script because like it's very easy to like uh, not follow the exact form of mm -hmm. the comments for example like like m in many cases like people come to garage and they ask like why why does my job work like why why is it killed like or something like that and then we notice that there's uh, a small typo in the parameters or something like that in mm -hmm. the sbatch parameters and that is very common and it's nothing like it's just like that happens to everybody but it's it's easy it's better to, to like try it out uh, yourself to write these so that you get like a like you can see the form of the parameters yourself because we, when we see the script then after after it, it doesn't work we quite quickly recognize that, okay hey, there's a there's the, like a typo there so it's yeah. a good idea to test it out so which exercises should people work on then yeah mm. I... how much time yeah. should we allocate maybe we should have something like um 15 Me minutes maybe so it could be like 15 minutes and then 10 minutes of break and we resume at the zero of the hour um yeah i know this maybe, is yeah like what mm. what do you go from here once you're familiar with the editor and these parameters then everything else is simple incremental work from that so yeah it's worth it this to spend like... a bit more time now rather than struggle later this is really the like the meat of the uh, meat of the thing. So basically, uh, it's very important to like get get a grasp of this because like everything is built upon these non-interactive jobs. Like mo like like if you want to use more than what you can run, like more than you can run in command lines, you need mm -hmm. to be able to do this. And that's why it's good to like do these exercises and try this out so in the first exercise like i mentioned it's simple like uh, simple sbat script second exercise um, is you can test out what we just like the canceling uh, of the of the not of job mm -hmm. and the third exercise try to see like completely uh for yourself like how the non-interactive workflow works so basically to meet this job that constantly does something in the background and will produce your output and then get out of there, like get out of the cluster completely, come back and see that it's still running. That is very important to like get this kind of a like workflow where you go to a cluster just to submit your jobs and then do some other stuff so that uh, you don't have to like think about it until it's finished. Yeah. Should we actually give 20 minutes for the exercises and make the break until I think five? Maybe, maybe we should have a 15 minutes and then go through the exercises. That mm. might be but then should we go through the exercises after the break we shouldn't put people yeah, in yeah. a position where it's a question between yeah. break and that's doing true. the exercises so that's true so so let's let's how about um okay we do f five to five to two uh, sorry five to one and then yeah. uh 10 minute break and then we go through the exercise welcome back 
So, uh, let's see how we're doing here. Simo has gone and added a pull to the bottom. Did he manage to run the exercises? Um, please vote. I guess this is a multi-answer. Um, yeah, yeah, put put a uh, like uh, we can then probably use the use it to to see if some of the exercises are bad or good or whatever. Like if we add this kind of a multi-use multi-answer thing, so you don't have to go yeah. the exercises in sequential order. So you can uh, you can do them in. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, we thought now we can do the exercises, or at least the first few, as a demo. Um, or do you think that there's enough here now that we should move on? I think we could uh, like uh, at least go through the like the first uh, first like we basically did access to. Uh, like it was the cancel top canceling, but we could go through the exercise one and exercise three, uh, or maybe exercise mm -hmm. um, exercise one yeah. actually uh, okay. to to see what. Okay, let's take a look then. I'll get my screen arranged. Mm -hmm. Okay, so exercise one. Yeah. What do I do? So I'm in my Kickstart directory here. Yeah. Um, so let's create a new new uh, file for like serial exercise one. Yeah. Dot sh. Yes. So it says make a batch job that just runs host name. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the command to run. And what's the other framework? Well, first we always have to uh, start with the bin bash thing at the stop at the top. Does it have to be bash? <laughs> Uh, well, it doesn't have to be, but but that is the most common. Like, you can also have other interpreters, but it's usually tricky, and usually you want to do other stuff. Like in your job, you want to do other commands such as like uh, load modules, or you want to uh, move to a folder or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you usually want to do like command line stuff. So Bash is the best yeah. one to use usually. And then uh, usually, like always, like th these are basically something you. You, uh, it's a good idea to like get accustomed to writing all the time. So basically, like just put something into time and memory because like mm -hmm. you don't. There, there was questions in the HackMD that what happens if we forget these, and of course, like you get some uh, some like uh, uh, defaults defaults there. But it's it's basically like like you just need like i i highly recommend getting like this kind of a habit of writing like these first lines all the time like uh autopilot like mm -hmm. when you need to create a new script you just write these automatically yeah uh so okay we need to change the job name so should we look at the reference uh, yeah. uh how do we set the job name and so what does that actually mean yeah i'll push Control z to minimize nano mm. Why does that not work? Yeah, we we can look at the reference in the in the documentation. Oh, oh yeah, okay. I was yeah, going to show the, opening a much. manual page. Let's yeah. see. So I see job that, name that can be left uh, as a like an extra for the bash course. But yeah, so so you can specify a job name. So this is like if you have a lot of different jobs, it's usually a good idea to put a job name for your like. Otherwise, it's automatically interpreted from the commands that you're running or the name mm -hmm. of the script that you're running but it it might be helpful for you to like like figure out what is the what kind of a uh, uh, program you're running so it's easier for you to pass the output of the slurm history and so forth yeah okay and then we need to specify output file so okay. how do we do that so i remember that dash o from somewhere else um, yeah, it's either dash o or dash dash output. So, so you notice that many of these commands have like long form and short form. In the documentation here, we usually use the long form because that reminds you what is what is the mm -hmm. uh, the parameter. It's it, it's like it says it uh, says 
it does what it sets on the tin, basically. Like, <laughs> like it, it, but but you can also use these short form uh, mm -hmm. things. And here, Richard has specified this wild card. Yeah. Uh, this really nice dash J. What does that mean? So this means it will use the job ID there. So uh -huh. that means if I run it multiple times, the output won't be overwritten. Yes, these mm -hmm. kinds of wildcards, there's many of them in the in the manual, uh, SPATCH manual, so you can use various different uh, wildcards uh, to, to like uh, make your output, like auto generate a bit more uh, fancier output names. Yeah. Okay, so I will yeah. exit and save with yes. Okay, and let's submit it. Check the output. Can you check the Slurm queue? Is it currently? Okay, it looks like it ran. Right, already ran. And we see already there that the output file, uh, like Richard specified this percent %j there, uh, it got the output file got this uh, uh, job ID there. Can you uh, run Slurm history? Let's take a short history. Yeah. So there we see that on, uh, I think it was CSL 48, uh, mm -hmm. it ran, ran this command and we saw, we can see that it, it ran. Yes. Okay, so uh, what does the output file say? Mm. Yes, so it matches. Mm. Yeah, so it, it run run there. There was a okay. good question in the in the HackMD about like why do we need to specify the S run within the uh, the S batch script? Mm -hmm. And the reason behind that is like we'll talk about it even more detail in the monitoring. But but basically, your when you submit an S batch uh, job, you can see there that there's like this uh, hierarchy of different uh, steps in the in the output in the history. So basically, the first uh, line it shows you job ID, the full job, like the, what the full job consists of, and then you see like these uh, separate steps, so this batch, extern, and this zero. So what these mean is that like these are the job is like run in multiple steps, and unless the steps are named, then the steps are like clumped together into these batch steps. So so. Basically, you will just run them, and you don't necessarily know what what they actually did. But sometimes you want to know what is the output of the um, of or like you need to uh, see as like specify uh, how how different steps work. So so basically, see how how different steps behaved. So in that case, uh, you if you run the S run. You get like this, for example, there you get like the zero step. Uh, yeah. The job name for that is host name. So that is the command yeah. host name. So basically like it, you can so for, then... For example, if you had a massive job and there was part of it that read in the data and part that did a computation or part that processed data, part did a computation, you could allocate the time between them and realize which one was actually the slow one or not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff, and and also like uh, you can do various other monitoring tricks, and also uh, you, when you're running these uh, massively parallel jobs or big parallel jobs using MPI, you usually need to specify this S run so that the Slurm and the MPI can communicate to know where the jobs will be running. Uh, there was also a good question that that uh, so can you specify other parameters such as the partition or something in the S batch? Uh, thing and the, uh, and the short answer is yes like uh, you can you can specify whatever s batch parameters uh, there like uh, arguments so for example this mail uh, mail uh, uh, like mm. where do you want the mail to end up or partition or what partition to use or whatever and uh, uh, all kinds of stuff you can specify in the in the s batch comments. Like there's mm -hmm. lots of different parameters that you can specify there, and they're basically like you can also override these from the command line. 
Uh, so, mm. uh, uh, Richard, do you want to try out? So, yeah. for example, here uh, we have the output file specified, but let's say mm. we like, le like, okay, let's keep that leave it like as that. it is. This is the yeah. way you would comment it. So we leave it as it is. Yeah. Yeah, you can comment these, like if you don't want them to be, you can add another comment, so they're not. But let's say if Richard wants to, like, this, uh, submit this job, but he wants the output file to be different in this specific case, uh, he can, uh, from the command line, uh, your command line, it, like it goes <laughs> a bit out of the vision, yeah. but... Uh, uh, I can fix that. But basically, uh, you can from the command line when you're doing the s batch like call, you can overwrite this. So these are basically the same parameters, and and like if the like if there's no parameter set, the defaults of the system are used. If if you have in the script file some parameters, those are used, and if you run something in the, from the command line, that overrides those. So basically, you have this kind of a hierarchy of different commands that you can do. Okay, so should we run it? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, it's probably done. And if I list, we yeah. see new output file. Yeah. And the old so, one is still uh, there. Yeah. So I think we can move on to the monitoring section now that we are like. Uh, yeah. So. The other, other stuff is basically the similar kind of thing. Uh, so you. You basically have the, uh, yeah. You basically, what is good to, uh, like, what is important for this uh, serial job is to is notice that that all of the uh, stuff is like done on the background somewhere. Like once you you basically fire and forget it, you give, give the task to the queue and the queue do does it for you, and you it does exactly what you say it to be like exactly the kind of stuff you needed to do yeah but let's look at the monitoring i think okay mm, 